Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Lion of Prophecy Television. So Brandon and I are sitting here with our cell phones and of course we're both Absolutely. connected to the internet. And uh, this is the second part of a two-part series about revelation and biblical technologies. Now we're not doing this just for props. We actually have some articles and at least some headlines we want to share with you because we promised you the last time that we were going to talk about the Bible and time travel and today's technology and the headlines concerning the possibility of time travel. Um, this might astound some of you that aren't keeping up with this, but isn't it interesting, Brandon? So we're using cell phones and we're marveling about being able to keep up with the news by the second and we, you know, we're connecting with the world. And l The last time we talked about the example of, of, of the Bible about communications, information, transportation, technology, and all those things that are in the Bible. The, the whole world will see things at once. Images will be made to live and breathe. The whole world will take a mark. All of this technology and more that we talked about last time, it already exists and people are already using these kinds of technologies. And we were laughing last time about the fact that so this, these cell phones we're holding, at the time we're producing this program, this, this stuff is barely a decade old as far as being able to have on a, a smartphone, for example, to be able to text and to email and to keep your office on it and to connect with the internet and talk all over the world and everything you can do from a smartphone. But give it another 10 years, if people are watching this 20 yeah. years or, or 10 years from now, 10 years from now, five years from now, they will probably laugh at the cell phones we're right. holding up right now and how archaic they look. And, yeah. and Theirs will be embedded into their yeah, forehead. Yeah, they'll, right. ha yeah. they'll have it embedded <laughs> in their ear already. You know, they'll be born with a little earbud. And, right, right. Uh, who knows? Who knows? The Lord's going to come back soon, so yes. maybe not. <laughs> but the bottom line is it's just exponential growth in technology. It's absolutely astounding. But let's just get right to the thing of time travel first. Before we go to the Bible, let's establish that we're not nuts. That's right. <laughs> well, we are, but we're not nuts about this. That's right. Because this is mainstream media stuff. Listen, I just want to read this to start it. I'm going to kick it off with this headline coming out of the UK Express uh, just, just a few days ago from the time of this filming. It says, uh, time travel is possible and has already happened, says esteemed physicist. Now, of course, the people who are working on the time travel technology are, by and large, uh, uh, physicists, That's right. um, quantum mechanics uh, scientists. Um, but, but this headline, I, you know, of course, I've read the whole article, and I don't want to bore you and sit here and read to you a whole article. But when it says it's already happened, it was it's kind of tongue in cheek. But they were saying that it's already been demonstrated with space travel and international space station and shipping people back and forth and the speed with which they go. That they and they gave the example in this particular article about an astronaut and I don't I don't they, they didn't go into the details of it but basically when he came back that he came back 0 0.02 seconds into the future and, and it's because of the time differentiation and mm -hmm. then there's a great scientific explanation of how that works but it, I know that's minuscule and they they state that but they're showing that if we could speed it up even more yeah then you could truly yeah. go into the future. And then they quote Einstein and his theory of relativity, et cetera. Right. So, and then with our understanding of quantum mechanics and parallel universes and parallel worlds and different dimensions of reality, you know, but anyway, read your headlines. Yeah, no, <laughs> and this is mainstream stuff. Yeah. This is off of uh, a NASA website. The title of the uh, article is, Is Time Travel Possible? question mark. Right. And if you go into that article, uh, the author of that uh, NASA, I want to emphasize that right. NASA article says absolutely time travel is possible. So it's not some back channel no. conspiracy exactly. theory site. Yeah. Um, listen, this is actually the day we are filming this. Right. Here are two headlines from the very day. The very day. I know you were astounded when you I, pulled it up. Just Unbelievable. Yeah. And this is the independent Major, One mainstream. of them was just from an hour ago. Yeah, yeah. And that is, it says, it should be possible to build a time machine, scientists say. All right. Okay. That's to the very day we're filming this. Right. Um, New York Post. Science says time travel is possible. Two days before we're filming this. Right. Uh, three days before we're filming this, Forbes has an article entitled, is time travel possible according to science? And then, of course, they go on to say, 
yes, it, it is. is. Yeah. So the begging question is, what in the world does time travel have to do with the Bible? Right, right. <laughs> well, folks, please hear this. <laughs> By the way, is your cell phone turned off? I, I hope we'll find yeah, we'll out. We'll find yeah. out in a minute yeah. if they ring, you know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, listen, what does it have to do with the Bible? I want you to hear this now. Now, don't turn us off. I want you. To, I want you to think of the uh, implications of this. Time travel is found throughout the Bible. That's right, <laughs> and and it's found in what the people in those days called visions or maybe dreams. L listen, let me give you an example. The Apostle Paul writes the Corinthian church and he speaks of himself and he says, I don't know if I was in the spirit or out of the spirit, if I was in the body or out of the body. He says, but I was caught up to paradise, That's to right. the third heaven. That's right. And then from there, he served as a prophet to the church for years talking about the days of the Antichrist. He wrote 2 Thessalonians. That's right. He saw it. He said the delusion, the miracles, the signs, the wondrous truth being thrown to the ground, the great deception that's coming. He saw the rapture of the church. Mm -hmm. He spoke about that. Sure did. He heard the trumpet blast. Even the time. He saw right. that. Yeah. He, he spoke of the return of the Lord and with what bodies shall those coming with the Lord come? that will be coming back with the Lord? What mm -hmm. kind of bodies? He writes the Corinthian church about that. I mean, Paul saw all kinds of amazing things. Watch this, 30 years before John. John was caught up to the throne of God and shown into our day and beyond. Paul was shown our day or beyond. That's time travel. That's right. Now, now you, in, in, in you're listening and you might say, well, no, that's, that's a dream, that's a vision, that's a miraculous, well, exactly. They didn't have the terminology time travel. That, that's why Paul struggled with trying to describe what happened to him. He said, I, I don't know if I was in the body or out of the body. I don't know if I was in the spirit or out. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how God pulled it off. All I know is I was thrust into the future, into the time of the Antichrist, into the time of the return of the Lord, into the time of the rapture. Paul said, I was there. Yeah. Now that's time travel. There are many more examples of it. Yeah. You weigh well, in. No, absolutely. And listen, there are examples of physical time travel. Because like yes. you said, people want to explain that away as a dream and a vision. Okay. Although it's still but, time travel. But it's still Let's time travel. Let's let them explain it away. That's right. But there are examples of physical time travel mm -hmm. in the Bible. Yes. Think about Philip and the Ethiopian. Yeah. What happens? Philip is on the road. He encounters the Ethiopian. Right. Uh, he witnesses to the man, explains the scriptures to him. The man, man gets saved. saved. He says he wants to be baptized immediately. They stop on the side of the road and he's baptized. And it says, and then Philip was, was taken away by the Spirit of the Lord. And appeared. And appeared somewhere, somewhere else. else instantly. Yeah. Um, the prophet Elijah. Right. You remember the, the, the king's messenger said, I'm not going to go and tell the king that you're coming because uh, the Spirit of the Lord will just carry you off somewhere right. else. You'll disappear. And right, then, because you've done that And before. then the king will be mad and kill me, basically. Right. And, because, and, and obviously this happened with the prophet that Elijah. That was the implication. They knew it. They Often. were, they were so, scared of him. <laughs> physical time travel. Right. And, and listen, this is, this is maybe the, and I say maybe, this is maybe the last great technology of the Bible mm -hmm. to be conquered. Mm -hmm. Think about all the other technologies, the ability for the whole world to see and worship an image at the same time. Mm -hmm. We have that technology. We've got that technology. whole world yeah. to be marked. And, and there, listen, there could be a greater technology than we a currently have. A greater revelation have of it. That's right. That, that is used for that. But we have a technology that can right. do that. It doesn't wow us when we read that no. now. Instantaneous communication. We've we, got it. We have that Instant, technology yeah. right travel. here. T uh, travel. Travel to and the fro. world in a few hours. I can get world. on an airplane today in the United States. I can be anywhere in the world in a matter of hours. Right. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. So I on and on New and York on. York in the morning and eat lunch in London. And just, Even the technology yeah. of Jesus walking on water, okay, right. it was a miracle that we witnessed, but we have scientists now that are using sound waves. Isn't that interesting that the universe was spoken into right. existence? Right. They're using sound waves to, to levitate objects. Right. In water and, and in the air. And in, yes, and, exactly. Right. Right. So, so time travel. The ability for a person to leave one place and just appear somewhere else or to go right. backwards or forward in time 
in my opinion, I believe it is, it is the last great technology and, of the Bible, and, which even points more to the days we're living in. Yes, it does. And think of these technologies that are headline news right now. Eternal life technologies, genetic editing to the point of being able to change the entire ecology. That's coming out of the science books. Right. They're thrilled because we can recreate the world. Yeah. Eternal life technology. You've got world leaders like Elon Musk and others saying we can be like God. That's right. And now we're on the cusp or of the possibility. It may be, if, if the Lord tarries, it still may be decades away, maybe a hundred years away. But the thing is now they're beginning to pull the knowledge we have and look at the technologies we have and they're saying, NASA saying, New York Post is saying, others, it's possible. Uh, we think we can pull this off, That's right. time travel. That's right. So you're right. I mean, look at the technologies that these that I just spoke of have only been spoken of as possibilities in the last five years right. from the time of the filming of this, of this program. I mean, this is brand new stuff in the history of humanity, six to 10,000 years of human history, and only in the last five, 10 years have these technologies burst upon the scene, every one of them somehow spoken of in the Bible. Let me just run down some of these things. Think of Psalm 22, folks. Hmm. David was taken to the foot of the cross. That's right. Described he described perfectly. pierced hands and feet, oh, gambling for clothing under his feet, listening to the crowd saying, he saved others, let him save himself. Yeah. I, I thirst. Mean, I, mean, I thirst, yeah. his bones were out of joint. I mean, David was taken to the foot of the cross. That's right. Isaiah 53, bruised. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. for our transgressions, yeah. crushed for our iniquities, iniquities yes. pierced for our, I mean, I mean, still like a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he stood before his accusers. Isaiah was there somehow. That's right. And I know people would say, but that was a vision. Yeah, but what does that mean? How did he envision that? How did he know? How did David know? How did Isaiah know? David's case, it was a thousand years before it happened. Isaiah's case, four, five, six hundred years. How did they know these details? Mm -hmm. How did they describe it as though they're seeing it? Daniel chapter 7, taken into the divine assembly, the, the heavenly host, the throne and the thrones and the 10,000 times 10,000 angels, the little horn that passes in front of the Antichrist, then the one like the Son of Man that comes and is given rule and reign of the king. Daniel was taken into the judgment days of the Antichrist. That's right which is our time period and beyond. And, beyond, and yeah. he describes it in detail. How did that happen? Yeah. I mean, we can go, Paul taken into the third heaven, shown the last days. John, the book of Revelation, yeah. taken, taken in. He was on a rock island in you know, the Roman Empire. Listen, John and Ezekiel both described the throne of God. Yes. And they describe it exactly the same. Yes. The beings, the, the description of the beings. Yes, except John was given the, the revelation that poured forth from, That's the, from throne, the throne of God. That's bringing right. it into our lifetime. And listen, John described technologies. That's right. That when he wrote it, I mean, I would have been hesitant to have written that 2000. I would have begged God, please don't make me yeah. talk about this. They're going to think <laughs> that I've taken a bad drug. Mm -hmm. The whole world taking a mark, the whole world seeing something, an image being caused to live and to breathe. I would say, God, please don't make me write this. You know, fire from heaven. And I mean, yeah. please don't make me write this. But yet John was faithful and he wrote it. And for 2,000 years, it was in the Word of God as science fiction. Yeah. Yet our generation sees it as science truth and that, fact. That's right. And, but listen, I just think that all of this, everything we've discussed and, and, and sticking to the topic of time travel points to we're coming to the end of the story. Yeah. It's getting close. You know, and again, we're not setting a date of tomorrow right. or 10 days from now or 10 years or 100 years. The, the bottom line is we're coming to the end of the story. We're seeing things being fulfilled right. that we have only seen. Right. And, and the, the, the amount of things left to be fulfilled is getting smaller. Smaller and smaller. Smaller. Yeah. smaller every single day, right down to the technology side right. of things that we're literally to the point of maybe having one more techno major technological advance to conquer before right. that's it? Right. I mean, we're right there. I know. I know. It is amazing. And you know, you talk about how it's coming down smaller and smaller. And, and, and I use the illustration of like a funnel. That's how prophecy works. Up in the big broad mouth of the funnel is the beginning of the prophecy. The fulfillment of it is at the tip. But as as it gets to the fulfillment, it gets narrow and narrow and narrow, and things speed up. That's right. The, the example I use is Genesis 3, when God speaks to Satan, 
And he says, because of what you've done. He said, what's going to happen is this woman that you've beguiled, he said, through the seed of woman, that seed will come. That will be your destruction. And he says, you will bruise his heel, but he will crush your head. That's right. Well, there's, there's a prophecy given in the garden that's at the top of the funnel. Yeah. Then it comes all the way down through thousands of years and then finally hundreds of years in Zechariah and Isaiah and David and Micah, and, you know, and Malachi, right on down. Then it comes down to shepherds having angels appear mm. to them and wise men coming and the birth in Bethlehem. Now it's getting real close, but still, even when the birth comes, there's 30 more years before he would reveal himself. And then there would be three more years of public ministry. Then he would be on the cross and you would say, all right, that's it. No, there's still three more days. And then he rises from the grave. You say, okay, well, that's it. No, there's now 50 more days and the church is born and that's the right. Holy Spirit is. You see, it just gets narrow and narrow, but it gets quicker and quicker. As it, and, and so what you're saying is, in regards to the technology, we're talking about time travel, eternal life, technology, all of these things. Um, you know, genetic editing, changing the world, becoming like God's. It's just, I mean, it's just coming right down to the funnel because there is one who's going to set himself up and say, okay, I am God. That's right. I am your God and you better take a mark and follow me. That's right. That's where we are. We're, we're right down. We're in the neck somewhere. We're not at the pinpoint. We're not setting a date. But the funnel that started up here, oh, we're way, <laughs> we're way down in the neck. Don't you agree? I, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and again, what we're talking about here today, this technology of time travel. Headline news today, the very day we're filming this, is just one more marker of the times we're living yeah, in. Yeah. You have closing words for our audience. Absolutely. Because of the times we're living in, keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes. Stay focused. Yeah. Be in the Word. Guard your mind. We've yes. talked about that. Be aware of what's going on in the world around us. Right, right. Because, man, it is happening faster and faster and faster. We have to be aware. And that's why you watch Lion of Prophecy television, that's so right. that you can be aware of what's <laughs> happening in little 15 minute sound bites, <laughs> which is another part of the technology that's of right. our day. Today we're living but in. But that's okay. Thank you for listening to these little 15 minutes. I pray that the Lord uses it to bless you. God bless you always.